all come from somewhere. No one is truly American. We're all immigrants. But does being first generation, second, or even third affect your place in 2019 America? Could these people of many nations become a part of the American way of life? Thousands of immigrants from Central America are currently traveling together en route to the United States. Foreigners Most of those who want to work illegally in the U.S. will soon face Addressing a stricter review process. Border and calling for funding. They just want to receive, receive, receive. I think I've been able to be um, exposed to people from all over the world. I believe that we should have an open door policy of some sorts, but I think that with anything, you have to determine who's coming in, why they are coming in. I, I was forced to speak English, so I, I did it. I do what you have to do. I mean, if I'm being brutal, I, I'm a white male, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, but I think... I came here as a student, so that's like how I managed to stay here. It's I always say, I was born in the wrong place. I love Brazil, but don't get me wrong. If I think about my friends in New York, I would say 5% are Americans and the rest are from everywhere. Because if you came to Ellis Island, you needed to have someone to sign for you, you needed a place to live, you needed a job, then you'd be taken care of. You'd have to work and earn a living here, become a citizen, and that's great. Now, you come in, you go over the border, and you get everything. While we, working people, have to work nine to five, sometimes two jobs to make ends meet. Where certain people <laughs> come in and they bring families and families and families and they just go on to welfare and they just sit there and do nothing which is and they don't want to become a citizen I think that immigration is what, you know, America was founded on. It wouldn't, there was obviously people who inhabited this land before the rest of the world kind of came, but I think that we face the same struggles no matter what time it is. I believe that we should have an open door policy of some sorts, but I think that with anything, you have to determine who's coming in, why they are coming in, how they're coming, how do we, um, how do we balance that? So in other words, you know, if people are fleeing persecution and they're fleeing horrible situations, I think that we need to find a way to make this a very hospitable country. It's tough because people who come here illegally, then, then we don't have any way of putting them through a system and that's what's hard. Now my question is, why are they coming illegally? Is it because they don't know how else to get here, in which case we need to do a better job in terms of making people aware? Um, if they're coming because they're trying to flee from something in their own country, a dangerous situation, but because they don't want to live there anymore, then that's another issue. I don't believe in borders, so I don't know if I don't know if I would handle it. I don't know how an actual policymaker would handle it because I don't believe we should have borders. Anyone who wants to come to the United States, I believe, should have the right to do so. I think that also people who are coming to work and they just want opportunity, then there's maybe some other paths uh, to help them become a part of this country. And you know, anybody who's here and who's lived here for a long time, you know, there's there's got to be ways to embrace them. And I think that everybody's got to jump through the right hoops. And the vetting service, the vetting service is that the vetting to get into the country is so bad. We are so overcrowded as it is. I don't mind people coming in, but become a citizen, earn a living. Oh, it's pretty hard to become a citizen in America. So. I'm in the process of the green card right now and it takes forever. Uh, you have a weird dealing with the lawyer because it's so difficult and there's so many different papers and forms to fill out, so yeah. Um, I moved here from Germany when I was, um, the south of Germany when I was uh, 29. I worked for a company that had a plan in um, North Carolina, in Morrisville, and they sent me over there for, um, it was part of the apprenticeship to go to um, the other 
subsidiaries to work there. I moved because my wife um, moved to the U.S. three years ago and then after a long distance relationship it was also time for me to move to the U.S. Um, yeah, the only goal I had at that point was finding a job here and obviously I found one. Um, it was not that hard to adjust to America society and customs. And we have others that don't want to conform at all to our rules and regulations at all. So uh, I'd say Europe and America, it is different, but not like too crazy different when it comes to culture. So when it comes, for example, to the health um, system or support for families, I'd say Europe is a little bit more supportive. So for example, when a wife gives birth, you don't have to pay in the hospital when you when you do have to send your kid to school um, it's pretty expensive here in Germany is for free uh, also when you go to college um, health insurance when you go to the doctor and you have something really small the bill can be pretty high so all these aspects are better in Europe so we definitely thought or are thinking about moving back to Europe or Germany one day I moved here from the Dominican Republic when I was like 11. Yeah, so uh, when I was in junior high school, it was really hard because um, if you didn't speak English, you will get jumped in the school I went to. So I was in the bilingual program. So I didn't speak English only until I was like in college that I was forced to speak it. You can go out and you don't have to stay inside your apartment when you're when you're, in, when, when you're in New York City, basically. Oh yeah, I wanted to be an artist. I mean, I didn't come here for that, but once I was here, I wanted to make money doing art, so that's what I'm doing every day. Uh, I mean, you know how everything's already been done and everyone has already done it before, so you kind of just like follow that. So like, any Thanksgiving, everybody, anybody that was brave enough to do it, I mean, they definitely have a motive to do it and they're looking for something better for themselves. So it's not like I'm supporting it like open arms because I don't know the situation with a lot of people, but if you're doing it because you have a good reason to do it, everybody deserves to advance in life and get ahead. Okay, so my sister was living here as a nanny and for nine months she said to me, you should come, you should come. And I was like, no, I don't want to, I have no interest. And um, finally in the ninth month I said, okay, I'll come for a month to travel and that's, really why I came to travel. So it was really, really long, really expensive, like over $10,000 just to, because you know you have to hire a lawyer, you have to go through a number of different interviews. Oh uh, yeah, I did it. Yeah, it was nice, it wasn't hard. Study all my questions, <laughs> do my test. What do you mean? So, I mean, there is a process in place, right? So, I went through the process and, you know, I paid however many dollars and I just, I guess I just don't understand why people don't follow the process, you know? I mean, I do because people are coming in from a country and they don't have a choice, so I want to be able to help people. We should do that, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but if you follow the process, then you live here like I did. Like, I just didn't come here and like, hey, I'm here now, okay, now what? The problem is, first of all, time, and second, money. Costs a lot of money. I think it costs too much, more than $2,000. If I apply by myself, I think it's $1,100 or something like that. Coisa mais linda, mais cheia de graça Ela menina que vem, que passa Num doce balanço, caminho do mar Moça do corpo dourado It's different, it's a, it's a different mentality It's more my mentality I just want to work and live comfortably as much as possible and safe things that I didn't have in Brazil. That was the reason, you know? I work with jewelry, and it's very dangerous. Jewelry business in Brazil. Here is is ideal place. I learned my profession here. So to me, everything is familiar. So that's why. I, I came to this country, had $200 in my pocket. It's not easy. 
and I knew it. We have Irish, we have German, my grandma, and my grandfather came from Sweden. So we are a melting pot here. But, but, but then again, our grandparents, our great grandparents, they worked. They worked, they had their children. We were born here. You can go to Paris, you can go to Switzerland, you can go anywhere and you're always gonna find ignorant people. And I just met a few ignorant people and that you feel that they are like racist. But, but I don't care, I'm not a racist, so I don't really don't care, I really don't care. You see, it's a melting pot and we work together well. If you want to work, you'll make it. You just gotta, you just gotta want to do that. Uh, I'm Edward. I moved to New York from Australia when I was uh, 29. Yeah, I, I visited. I lived here previously, but I moved here full time when I was 29. It's funny because like Australia is a very secular country. Religion just doesn't play a big part in politics or anything like that. And I was. It was interesting to me just seeing how much of a role religion plays in day-to-day -day society in this country. Uh, well, the first time I came, I came just to be in New York and hang out and party, so definitely achieve that goal. Uh, the second time, I don't know, I had my own jewelry label in Australia. I think I, I'm doing work that I never could have done in Australia, you know, just the scope and the scale of being in New York, you know, opens a lot more doors and offers a lot more opportunities. We have a lot of opportunities. It's the land of opportunities, but unfortunately, the land of opportunities is getting smaller and smaller and it's shrinking. It's harder and harder to get that American dream. Prices are going up, taxes are going up, and partly because of all the undocumented immigrants, which is really, really bad. If these immigrants want to stay here, become a citizen. Get your green cards if you have to. Stop paying taxes like everybody else. Um, I have a green card. Uh, I am, um, I was, I, I am hesitant, actually I have to renew it, I was hesitant to apply for a citizenship because I have an Australian and a British passport and I, I guess I refer to them as my escape plan, you know, um, if it all gets too weird here I can just jet off to one of those countries. I think that it is insanely divisive. I, I've always found it really peculiar that white people who move to a different country, like, like if you're American and you live in Singapore, you're referred to as an expat, not an immigrant. It, it's like the language seems to be very different for white people who live in other countries than it does for you know people who probably have a more valid reason. But if they have an accent in English, um, I think that people tend to Americans tend to discriminate against them. It's unfortunate, but I still have white privilege. It was a seamless assimilation and integration for me because I spoke English and I came from a middle class background. I taught undocumented children, undocumented immigrants went to my school and they were, uh, the kids were nervous every time there's a threat about INS coming to their neighborhood, for instance. So they would not come to school because they were afraid of going home and their parents not being there. Uh, I empathize and I sympathize with the applied, but I can't relate to them. Well, I'm very disappointed from the government, uh, what they did in the last couple of months, um, moving a big step back from what America used to be. I believe that the U.S. has caused a lot of conflict in these countries that these people are now fleeing, and so I think there needs to be some ownership of those. Uh, there needs to be some ownership of the reasons people are coming to this country in the first place. I mean, like, I think I understand how they feel to leave their country, they leave behind all their customs, they may leave their family behind, and you know, that's a big upheaval. And I can understand that part of it, but um, I guess I don't understand the people who are coming here as refugees. I, I don't, I do understand that, but I haven't been in that situation, so I can't relate. Um, let's find a way to help them become a part of this the right way and feel confident in where they live. I always say that one of the greatest lottery winnings I ever had was being born in the United States of America. I would like to have the privilege to say that I consider myself an American. I am not an American citizen, but I am much more American than Brazilian, so... Um, and to be honest, I don't... I've never wanted to call myself an American. I'm an Australian who's lucky enough to get to live here, yeah. Yeah, 
I'm very lucky to, I guess being an American is being more able, capable of doing more of my life than I would be in more rights for females than in other countries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm Dominican American. That's what I am. But conform. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Respect all laws. Respect what we are giving you and respect what's happening. Don't take it for granted because it could be taken away from you because that's another subject because our rights are being taken away from us but that's another subject. It's today the anti-immigrant rhetoric that has such a negative impact on our society, our culture, so I'm hoping that that will turn around. I'll, I'm very friendly with them because you don't know who is who. So I do treat them. I don't talk down to them because I don't know their backstory. So. Say there's a lot of places to live in this world and lots of things to do just to be open to and just realize we're all the same even if we're very different looking and very different acting or lots of different backgrounds. It's just we're all human beings. Uh, like I said, I'm still in the green card process, but I wouldn't say I'm American. I'm a world citizen. Get on your knees in the fire. You can leave it all in your mind. And it's all in your mind. Call in the back seat a friend. It is Australian accent. Girl. <laughs> <laughs>